And you say you want to defend the Christian faith? Yeah. And what does that mean? Uh, so, first off, what is the Antichrist, right? There's the Antichrist. It's the people that try to distort Christ's message. Um, so Christ says, love your neighbors, love your enemy. He says to uh, prioritize family, to, uh, you know, follow certain commandments. And then the people nowadays, when you see these kids that are chopping off their body parts, when you see the LGBTQ agenda that's being uh, propagated out through, through right. the media, through Twitter, um, normalizing porn, normalizing these things, that's all going against Christ's message. So my mission now is to defend the Christian faith, to, de to show how their worldview is based on a faulty premise right. and show them that it's going to lead to nothing but degeneracy long term. And then how without Christ, there's really no purpose to life. Amazing. And so... Amazing. And by, <laughs> and by doing that, you are defending the faith? Yes, sir. Yeah. Oh, okay. And do you love all people? Um... Yeah, I guess I guess God calls us to love all people. And do you love all people? Uh, what do, what do you mean by love? Because you say something about God, defending the faith is about God's love, or something you just said. Yeah, like what God commands us to. to yeah. Uh, right to love, to love, right? And so, right, do you right. love all people? I love all people in the sense that we're all made in God's image, but um, I don't tolerate all people. Oh, you know. In terms of in terms of what they believe, what they're exercising. Um, yeah, I, w I wouldn't love what they do in that sense. But you love all people? Yeah, yeah. God commands us to, right? No, but do you? <laughs> God <laughs> commands us to, but do you love all people? Uh, I would say, I would say yes. Do yes. you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> How can we see you unsure about it? I, I guess because uh, I would need more clarification of what you mean by love, like, you know, there's times where you, there's a criminal or someone wants to maybe shoot you or attack you or kill you. Um, the, the part that we should follow is to love your neighbor and love your enemy. Right. But we're all sinners. And so at that point, will I have love in my heart or will I have hate? I don't know. Oh, but for now, do you love all people? Right now in this setting, yes. Not a <laughs> <laughs> you made me excited. So, yeah, I love all people right now. You do? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Uh, okay. Interesting, I'll come back to okay. that. Um, do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? Yes. And what does that mean to be in a fallen state? That God, when he created this world, it was intended to be perfect. Uh, when Adam and Eve sinned, it brought sin into the world. So now we're sinners. We have um, corrupt genes, you could say. Um, so now we're, you know, trying to, we're deviating from what God commanded us to do. Right. And we're, we're just sinners in that way. Oh, I got you. And so are you, you're a Christian, right? Yes, sir. And are you a sinner? Yes. Yeah. You're a sinner? Yeah. Even as a Christian, you're a sinner? Yeah. Yeah. And I think the difference between a sinner now and a sinner before Christ was now when I sin, my, my conscience is much different. I, I feel guilty of the sin. I repent of my sin. I don't want to sin again. Um, but I think it's just within our nature to just, you know, want to improve and want to be Christ-like. Right. But it's ultimately hard to actually achieve perfection through that. So are you saying that it's, a, it's hard to to be a Christian and not sin? Yeah, absolutely. Really? And, and why is that? Um, because in the, in the world that we live in today, especially, right, where porn is, is, is pushed, um, where partying, drinking, it's all normal. Uh, um, even abortions, right? Getting abortions, it's something that is socially acceptable and even morally good now. Right. It's hard not to, not to be a sinner when you're a bunch of degeneracy and a bunch of corrupt people and corrupt souls. Um, especially when it's been normalized through your schools, through your education system, through your politics, through your Twitter. It's very hard to, to refrain from that. And I think the reason that, uh, why we are sinners is because God wants us to depend on Him, to come back to Him. Because if we were all perfect, if we didn't sin, we right. wouldn't even need God. We would uh -huh. just be able to depend on ourselves. Are you a street preacher? Uh, not really. No, I would say more street debater. A street debater, yeah, not yeah. street preacher. Right, right. And so does God see you as a sinner or does God see you as a sinner? Yes. So does God see you as a sinner or s saved? Um, that's a good question. I wish I could read his mind, but I, I would say, uh, I would say, so, you know, Romans 10, 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall right. believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Right. So I, I put my full trust and faith in Jesus um, and, I, and I do believe in him and I have that genuine conviction. All right. Uh, but with that said, uh, no one will ever be perfect. So even just one sin says the wages of sin is death. So even right. just committing one sin is making you a sinner. Even just bragging about something, lying about one thing, 
that's already a sinner in, in God's image. Amazing. So which is easy for you to believe that you are a sinner or all your sins have been forgiven? Which one is easier to believe? For you. Um, that all our sins have been accounted for. Which is easy for you to believe that you are a sinner or all your sins have been forgiven? That all of my sins have been forgiven is easier to believe. And then why do you call yourself a sinner then? Uh, because <laughs> you're asking some good questions. Um, so Jesus, there was a shedding of blood that happened at one point. Right. right. If Jesus never died for us on the cross and there was no shedding of blood, um, we, we, once again, the wages of sin is death. So we all deserve death, immediate death, right off the bat. We all deserve that. Correct? Would you agree or? No. No. Why not? I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. So the wages of sin is death, meaning that we're all corrupt. Uh, so there had to be a shedding of blood for you and me to live right now. We need blood. As soon as, if we just start losing blood real fast, we'll die. Right. right. So we need blood. So Jesus sacrificed his blood for us. Um, and so what that means is that he paid for the debt. He, he paid for our sins for the entirety of existence. However, that doesn't mean that we're going to be away from sin now. The, the reason the Bible exists to begin with too is for us to reason with God but also to give us a guidebook as to how to live life, meaning that we're going to experience these difficulties. Right. And if we weren't going to experience them, then the Bible would just say you're going to go through life very easily. You're not going to face depression or anxiety or, or drugs or sex or adultery. You're just going to live an easy life. But it, it kind of gives us a guidebook as to how to deal with those things. So in the Bible, does it say that God's way is easy? His burdens are light? Uh, I don't know. Does it? Yeah. Okay. So what does that mean from your, from your view? Why do you have to go through life sinning? You know, having a difficult time when God says those who follow him, believe in him or follow him, their, their life is easy. If you take on his ways, it's easy. Your life is easy and your burdens are light. Hmm. I, I would say that depends, yeah, on like um, your understanding of it. Um, from my view, because... Do you believe God when he says that? Yeah, but I guess I would under... like want to get more clarification as to what exactly. You want him to tell you what that means? No, I would say someone that uh, interprets scripture a certain way. Maybe, you know, a lot of times there's parables. A lot of times there's um, deeper meanings behind things or certain things align with a different verse in a different right. chapter. And so what's difficult about understanding that those who follow him, he said, those who take on my ways, their, their life is easy and my burden is light. So follow me. What's, what's difficult about that to um, understand? Yeah, I guess, I guess like understanding what, what easy would mean. Like easy as in like life is not hard, as in you won't deal with hardships. Is that what it would mean? Right. Okay. I guess that's just hard for me to, and maybe I just have to learn more, or I do have to learn more about that. Um, but it'd be a little bit difficult because I, you know, what we observe in nature, right? How do we understand truth? It's what's in correspondence with reality. And so when we look at reality, there's people that are depressed, suicidal. Um, there's people that are on drugs to cope with certain things. People dealing with, with porn issues and, and cheating. You know, so when we look at those things, life is hard in that sense. Uh, but when we, I think in a sense, I do understand though what it means because when you do come to Christ, your mm -hmm. life is easy in the sense that he has relieved you. You know, right. he says, come to all, me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I'll give you rest. So is your life easy or difficult? Uh, I would say both. You have, it's hard and easy. I would say it's like, I know on your show once you said um, that the Bible says you can find perfect peace with him, right? Do you believe that? Yeah, I believe that. And do you have perfect peace? When I'm, when my energy is consumed in him. So do you have perfect peace? When my focus is all on, on God? Yes. So do you have perfect peace? <laughs> like throughout the day? Just so on a daily do, basis? Do you have perfect peace? <laughs> <laughs> what the? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Beta. <laughs> don't be a bird. <laughs> um, I don't have perfect peace throughout the day. Why don't you have perfect peace if you believe in God? Because when I don't have the perfect peace, it means I'm deviating away from God. And, what and why do you do that? Because we're all sinners, Jesse. Mr. No, but Peterson. why do you deviate from God? Uh, you know, because uh, we deal with hardships. I deal with hardships. Um, maybe, um, maybe, you know, you get something, you get attacked. Maybe someone's making a lie about you on social media for me. Um, maybe someone's starting some rumors. Uh, maybe someone's threatening you about something. So you feel that your focus isn't on God at that moment. It's right. on that one thing. Right. And so which is easy for you to believe that you are a sinner or all your sins have been forgiven? That all my sins have been forgiven. So then why do you call yourself a sinner? 
because we're all sinners. But he says you're not. They have been forgiven. Right, but but when, when if, it says... If he forgive you for the debt, why, you think God see you as a sinner? Yes. But then he said all your sins have been forgiven. Why would he see you as a sinner? Right, well, but when it says your, your sins have been forgiven, it doesn't mean your inability to sin has been removed. And why is that? He said that anyone that says that they believe in him and they are sinning, they are a liar, the truth is not in him, in that person. So then what did that mean that we're all perfect? If that were tr completely true? Because you, you're made it in his image and he is perfect. But then, but your show is called The Fallen State because right. we're in a fallen world, right? Right. So then how would those coincide? I'll get to that in a minute. Okay. That's a good question. Uh, don't let me end the show without referring okay. to Okay. Because um, I'm trying to understand is like, I know the sins have been forgiven. Right. But I, I don't think that means that our inability to sin is now a thing. We're still like, we're still going to be sinners. But the wages of sin is death, meaning that there was a shedding of blood to remove the, the death part of it. Right. So like, for example, if you made one lie right now and Jesus didn't die for, for your sins, you would be worthy of, of uh, the death penalty, for example. Right. If Jesus didn't shed his blood for you. Really? But, so that's what, the wages, that's what the wages of sin would mean. <laughs> Let me ask. Um, so... Even though Christ said, and God said too, that all your sins have been forgiven, you don't believe that. No, I do believe that the sins have been forgiven. Then why do you, well, I don't want to go back. To wait, wait, so you're saying you don't sin anymore? We'll get to that too. Okay. But I'm trying to understand why you call yourself a sinner when that's not what, oh, that's, not, that's not what God called you. Why are you calling yourself that? A sinner? Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish I could remember a specific Bible verse to, I guess, substantiate this. But Do you have anger? No. You don't have anger? I, I deal with, like, I'll have angry moments, but I don't have anger. And so do you have anger? Um, no. You don't have anger? Mm, sometimes. <laughs> and so do you have Actually, anger? Actually, I do have anger. Yeah, yeah. Right. So how is it possible that a son of God serve the devil and God? Well, because in Colossians, um, or I forget if it's Corinthians, uh, it says that one who, uh, one will, will hate many things, right? One will have hate in his heart. Um, will that mean towards specific people or towards specific actions? Like, for example, I hate all the agendas that are pushed now about racism. I hate the, the agendas that are pushed within telling kids that they can do whatever makes them happy. I hate, those things make me angry. Right. And why do they make you angry? Because it's a deviation from Christ's message. And what does it have to do with you? That um, it says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy but Spirit. But how are you going to do that if you hate them? No, because I don't hate if the individuals. If you hate the sin, how are you going to help them if you have hatred? Because I hate the sin, not the people. So do you believe it's possible to be of God and have hatred? Yes. You do? Yeah. Is hatred of God? No, it's, it's not from God, but hating, like it, hating your sin is... Is hatred of the devil? I guess it would depend on the context. Why, why don't you overcome all your anger? Why, why don't you just let it go and have no anger? So you're saying, um, like, I not even have anger towards the things that are wrong. Right. Why don't you let anger go and be free of anger since anger is evil? Um, you know it's evil, right? Anger. Mm -hmm. So, like you would say, me hating uh, rape or having anger towards rape—that's that's of the devil. Right. You know better than the person you have the anger toward, because anyone that has anger is a murderer. But, and you and God said that that anger person is a murderer and cannot be trusted, uh, because anyone that has anger is of their father and the devil. But I wouldn't have hate towards the person. I'd have it towards the the action. You would be able to separate. How are you gonna separate the two? Because we're all sinners, but, but we're also made in God's image. Amazing. Right? Amazing. Let me ask. So do you have anger? Uh, at times. So do you have it? Like, on a, am I an angry person? No. So you don't have anger inside of you? No. Will, will you get angry at times? Where is that coming from? Um, sometimes not, uh, not getting in my way or sometimes... Um, seeing something evil occur. But isn't it coming from inside of you? Mm -hmm. So if, it, if it's inside of you, that means that you 
have it. <laughs> Does that mean that you have it if it's inside of you? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we could, we could use the same metric because by the same way, like when you commit one sin, you're a sinner. So then for me, I'm angry once, I'm, I'm angry. So you're a sinner and then I'm angry. <laughs> <laughs> what, didn't you agree? No. So you, you haven't committed one sin. Uh, I'm going to continue in a minute with that. <laughs> I think you're trying, right. I'm trying I think to you know where something. I'm going. Okay, okay, um, I got you. Uh, anger, anger, anger. Somebody want to, oh, who are you? I'm Eliezer Perez. And so who are you? That's your name. Yeah, I'm the one and only Mr. Never Lonely. That's your name. That's what you do. What's your, who are you? I'm a follower of uh, Jesus, spreading the truth. That's what you do, but who are you? Follower, uh, follower of Jesus. You tell me what you do, but you're not telling me who you are. What do you, what do you mean by that? Who are you? In what sense? Period. <laughs> Period or question mark? <laughs> um, I would say I'm a political street debater. That's what you do. So who am I? Right. Uh, I'm a, I would say I'm a fighter. That's what you do. So then uh, help me out, Mr. Peterson. How do, how do I get around this? Uh, around like what? what? Like, I don't understand what you're asking me. I'm asking you, who are you? But that can mean so many different things because I... Because, for example, like if I ask you, who are you, and you say you're a teacher, that's what you do, but that's usually people's identity. I would never say I'm a teacher. Not you specifically, but someone, a lot of times they'll say... But no, no, what I'm telling you, I would never say that's who I am. If you ask me who I am, I'm uh -huh. not going to say I'm a teacher. What would you say? Because that's what I do, that's not who I am. So who are you? After you tell me who you are, then... I, I just saying. don't know what you mean, so I'm trying to get an understanding. Oh, you know, have you ever wondered, who am I? Well, yeah, but then that's where I come back to, like, a follower of Jesus. But, but that's what you do, it still doesn't answer the question as to who are you. But wouldn't that be who I am? Because if you chop wood, right, every day, would that make you a wood chopper? Um, well, in some, in some ways, yes. No, that'd be what you do. But, but, but it's if... It's just a title that defines what you do, but it doesn't, it doesn't say who you are. Well, when, when people follow a specific mission or they reach a certain level of status, typically that thing that they use to reach a level of status is, becomes their identity. So, like, if I ask you who are you, you're and you say, right about that. You say I'm a successful businessman. And that's what you do, but that's who you are. But it's become their identity, but it's a false identity because that's not who they are; it's what they do. So you would say me being a follower of Jesus would be a false identity. N no. So it's so then it's it's a it's a good identity. I'm asking you, who are you? Is follower of Jesus is not your identity. I would say it is because that. When I think of what else could I be above that, there's nothing else that comes to mind. Really? There's nothing else of higher importance or value. Do you believe that it's possible to live a life free of anger, never having anger, no matter what? Yes. And so why don't you live that way then? I'm still working towards that. By doing what? Uh, by, by learning more about scripture, uh, by learning more about the historical evidence of Jesus and, and the Bible, um, the church, by surrounding myself with better people that are stronger in the faith than I am. Right. Um, even if you look at some of my videos, you know, or even just in my life, you know, I deal with, with sometimes with reacting the wrong way, saying things that aren't really aligned with a good character. Right. So <laughs> I think once I, once I indwell myself, you know, I let the Holy Spirit really indwell in me fully, then um, I won't really deal with that anger. But none of those things you just named will help you overcome anger. It's not going to cause you to overcome anger. So what would it, would it be like the mother? You got to go and forgive. And have you heard me say, forgive your mother? Mm -hmm. And have you done that? I think I have, but maybe... You think you have? But it, well, because now you're making me think, you know, if I have this anger, maybe, maybe I haven't forgiven fully. So have you forgiven your mother? Um, and that, mm, maybe not. So have you forgiven your mother? Uh, I would say, uh, I feel like I have, but I don't think I have. And so have you forgiven your mother? I think I have forgiven. And then sometimes she'll do things that will then cause me to kind of distance myself again. And then I have to forgive again. Did you tell her you have, you forgive her for what she's done to you? Uh, no, I haven't told her that. Then why do you think you have forgiven if you haven't gone to her and forgiven her? Because of the internal feelings that I feel. What's that? 
meaning that before I would deal with resentment or having a little bit of anger torture within my heart, and then I got rid of that afterwards. But you haven't gotten rid of it until you go and forgive her. So profess it for That's my That's why even when you're around her, she still get on your nerve. You don't like her. Hmm. Because you have not forgiven her. God said, before you can enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must go and forgive. You got to forgive your mother for recreating you in her image. You have her mindset. You have her emotions. Mm -hmm. You become just like her because she turned you away from your father. Mm -hmm. And in return, turning you away from God mm. because she hates your father. <laughs> you're a master psychologist, Mr. Peterson. What do you mean? You're, you're good because you describe my life perfectly right now. Yeah. So I might need to hire you for some sort of psychology thing later on. <laughs> my, maybe my therapist. But you got to, you, that's the only way you're going to know God. Yeah. You so gotta, do you think people, because um, I guess for me to get more clarification, do you think, people, when they have the anger, it just comes from their mother, and typically it's the same dynamic, the same paradigm. Um, Every human paradigm. being. Yeah. Anyone that's born through the woman must be born again, meaning that they must forgive and return to the Father and, and be born of the Spirit of the Father. And that's because the mom indoctrinates them with these feminine values and, and the feminist she's, ideology. the mother is evil. <laughs> Satan is the God of the woman, and the God above is the God of the man. Even so women don't have love, they only have hate until they forgive and return to God. So would you say women aren't made in the image of God? No, they're made in the image of man. But, but in Genesis, it says that God made woman, man and woman in his likeness. Right. They have God's spirit, but it's been over, overruled by Satan. And that's why the woman must go and forgive because her nature is wicked. And it's not her, but it's the nature of Satan because of Satan is the woman's God. So they must go and forgive their mothers who pass it on to them and so on and so on. So I want to make sure I understand they are made in God's image, but they've been deceived by Satan. Yeah. Satan so, is their God. So wouldn't that kind of affirm what I was saying earlier where I'm made in God's image, but I'm still a sinner because Satan still tempts us to fall into certain traps? Well, you're only a sinner of the heart because you have not forgiven. Salvation is of the heart and your heart has not changed. It's still wicked because you have your mother's nature. And it's not going to change until you go and forgive your mother because the anger that you have toward her is playing God, judgment. As long as you play God, you will never know God. So when you go and face her, mother, I've been resenting you because of what you've done to me, impose your will, whatever you've done. And I realize now you couldn't help it. Just as you can't help yourself, she couldn't help herself. Mm -hmm. And once you understand that, you go and forgive her, then God will forgive you and forgive your, mother, your father for not protecting you from her. And God will forgive you and make you free. But wouldn't you say if our sins have been forgiven, uh, the woman w wouldn't be able to fall into Satan's temptation? So we know? If, if we're made in God's image and we're no longer sinners from right. your view because God uh, forgave our sins. Right. Wouldn't that mean that women can't be deceived by Satan? That the woman cannot be? Yeah. If she returned to God, she cannot be. But until she returned to God, she's already deceived. Right. So that would kind of affirm once again what I was saying, which is like the deviation from Christ is where our sin comes from. And so when we deviate from, for example, when I deviate from God's word, from scripture. Oh, I see what you're saying. What you don't know yet, and we probably don't have time to get into it now, uh -huh. that the real you have never sinned. How is that? What, what, what is the real me? Like the spirit, the soul? The, you, re, the real you is a person that you don't know. Everything you think uh, is you is not you. So if we don't know, then how do you know? You have to return to the kingdom and he will show you. Have you he ever will seen get rid of the false self. And then, and then he will, you, when the false self disappear, uh -huh. your loneliness, your depression, your suicide, of thoughts, you believe that you're your body, your emotions and all that, when all that disappear because those are false self, then the real you will appear. Uh, but until that, until you stop identifying with the false self, you would never know who you are. So Jesse, I think I'm changing your mind right now. What do you mean? Because I, I, cause earlier you said, uh, like I said once again, the wages of sin is death, meaning right. that one sin is worthy of punishment. So that would mean that we're all sinners including yourself. What do you mean? That, that we all, when we deviate from God, because all evil is, is a deviation from God. Right, but that happened when you were a child. No, because even now you still sin and I still sin. What do you mean? 
I don't have an angry heart. I have no anger. Ever? Never. Okay, what about, what about lying? Ever lie? I have no anger. What about lying? I have no anger. Fornication? No anger. But anger isn't the only sin that you can or can't commit. Yes, it is. Ang so anger is the only sin. Because anger is of the nature of uh, the devil. What about lying? And that's why God said you need a brand new heart. What about lying? What, do you, what about lying? Or, or sleeping uh, out of, in, without being married. What do you mean by what about lying? Let's deal with lying. Yeah, like, what do you say lying is of Satan? No. Is it, so it's of God. Is, isn't there a time to lie? Um, well, I, I don't think so. I mean, one of the commandments is, um, is to, there, not, to not bear a false witness. Is there a time to lie? I would say no. Really? Yeah. Why would you say that? Well, I guess, I mean, because once again, the commandment is don't bear a false witness, meaning don't, well, don't give false information. Why would you say that there isn't a time to lie? Because there isn't. So, if, if, I'll, so, I'll put it this way. If Jesus says that, that you should not, uh, I guess, denun denounce your faith, even at the risk of being killed, right, being a martyr, if, if you should be willing to die for your faith, then I don't... faith? But let's go back to the lying thing because... Well, that's what I'm time. saying is like... Why isn't there a time to lie? Because, once again, it goes away from the commandments. It's a deviation from the commandments from God. Really? So if you land up in your home asleep and, and a criminal will break in and you hide your children under the bed uh -huh. and the criminal don't know where they are or they chase your wife into the house and she went and hid under the bed. When the criminal walk in, are you going to tell them where your wife is hiding? Well, you can just, you don't have to lie there. You can just say, I, I exercised my Fifth Amendment right and remain silent. <laughs> are you going you you to tell them where the criminal, are you going to tell the criminal where your wife is hiding? No, I would just, I just wouldn't answer. Amazing. So that's not lying. That's concealing, but that's not lying. No, you would answer. No, I wouldn't. Yes, you would. No, I would, mm -hmm. I would take the bullet. <laughs> Amazing. Jesse, are you I, married? No. Okay. Yeah. How you have long? kids? Yes. You do? Yeah. You have kids? Yeah. You look too young. How many? Just a few, maybe. Really? Yeah. I don't say the exact. I never show. Uh, show. Yeah, me either. Yeah, yeah. I never show my kids. That's well, good. I have a son okay. and two grandkids and then three great grandkids. Okay. Well, but I never put them in the public. So I don't blame you. For you that didn't anymore. want to remarry? No. My grandma's got some cute friends. No. Why not? <laughs> They need a sugar daddy. I don't need that. I'm happy. You're happy? Yeah.